So today we're going to look through the Stacks Explorer, see what's happening on the blockchain, and try to read some of the contracts. All right, and looking through the transactions, there was a, a mint here. It's called Mint2 from this City Cats NFT. It looks like City Cats might be a new project on Gamma. Yep, it says minting now. So you can tell that uh, we're going to see a few mints on the blockchain. Um, but let's read through this. So, sorry, that's going through the address. If we look at the transaction itself, we can see the name of the contract. We can see there's a transaction ID and who called it. This is the wallet of the person who called this mint function. But let's read through the mint function and see what's what's going on here. So every single transaction on the Stacks Explorer is going to have the source code of the smart contract that it's interacting with. This is really nice because it's completely transparent it's readable and you can tell exactly what's going on here. Um, so let's look for let's look for the mint mint to function inside of this call. So here we go. Define public mint to and it's going to do uh, two things. It's going to mint twice. And if both of those pass, then it will return a okay true which is a success response from this public mint um, so now we need to see what's going on here um, try is a function in clarity that essentially says try this next step and if it fails throw an error um, so here we define the mint function and it's showing here we have an if statement that's going to check against this value if the value is true, then it will run the pre-mint. If the value is false, then it will run the public mint. So varget is another stacks or clarity function that looks up and returns an entry from the contract's data map. So in this fun in this contract, we should have a pre-sale active value towards the top it's usually um, let's see yeah so it, when this contract was first deployed pre-sale active was set to false and I'm sure there's another call in here that we could find where pre-sale active can be set to either true or false or get toggled but I want to continue stepping us through these mint function so it will get the pre-sale active value if it's true it will run pre-mint with the transaction sender's address. Otherwise, it will run public mint with the transaction sender's address. So let's look through both of those. Let's, let's find pre-mint and see what's going on here. Okay, this is defining the function. Pre-mint is going to take a principal, which is the, the transaction sender, um, and we're gonna set that to new owner. The next step is going to set presale balance to the value of this new owner. So get presale balance. Um, let's see what that is. Get presale balance. Okay, map get. So the principal is going to have a presale balance. Let's say uh, they're going to have one, you know, pre mint credit and that pre-mint credit is going to allow them to only pre-mint one nft if their pre-mint credit or their pre-sale balance was two then they'd have two this next step is going to okay so so here it's saying let pre-sale balance this variable be the result of the pre-sale balance for this new owner principle which is the transaction center so who's ever sending the transaction to mint should have a balance we check that balance and then we follow this asserts. So asserts is a clarity function that ensures that the, the next step is going to pass. And if it doesn't pass, it throws an error. And what it's checking for is the pre-sale balance is greater than zero. So if the user has, or if the transaction sender has a pre-sale balance that's greater than zero, it will continue on to the next step. Otherwise, it sends this error. Now you'll see this a lot in different uh, contracts is there's a certain set of errors already predefined that are usually defined at the very top of the contract 
So you'll have this long list of error codes that we are expecting to be returned from the smart contract. And they're all set here. And these are the, um, in developer's terms, the caught exceptions. So the exceptions that we are expecting to occur in our contract. In this case, um, there's no pre-sale remaining. And that's going to be the error and not allow a user to mint. So let's go on. Let's pretend that the transaction sender actually did have a pre-sale balance that's greater than zero. The next step is going to be set this pre-sale count for the new owner to be their pre-sale balance minus one. That makes perfect sense. Uh, if I go to mint a, an NFT, it's going to deduct my credit and then move on to the next to the next step, which is a contract call to City Cat's NFT mint from this new owner, which is the transaction sender. So this should be a different contract. Let's see. If we go to City Cat's NFT. Okay, now we're in a different contract. Now we call this mint function on this contract. And there we go. Now we're minting a new NFT and can, it can only be called from the mint address. So we call mint, pass through the principal, which is the new owner that's set here, trans transaction sender um, that gets sent to pre-mint. So right here, this is a this is a new contract call. It's calling a contract that's outside of the current contract, um, with this new owner being the principal, which is the transaction sender. So again, mint transaction sender, uh, and now we are setting the next ID to be um, whatever the last ID minted was plus one. So it increments the mint ID. We have a couple of asserts. We make sure that this was called from mint, which I am assuming this is a check that this was called from the other contract. Uh, let the mint unwrap map get mint address true. And then it checks if the mint is equal to the contract caller. So mint address. So this is checking that the the call to mint is coming from this other contract so it's ensuring that the the gateway to the mint call on this contract is the previous contract great so if it's if it's not they're not authorized to mint we move on to the next asserts. The next asserts is checking that uh, it, they're not over limit. So City Cats has a limit. Um, if the last ID is equal to that, so yeah, var get last ID. If that's less than the City Cats limit, fine. If this fails, which means that the last ID is not less than the limit, that means we're at the limit and we are sold out. So then it throws that error for sold out. So now we've reached the match. And what match will do is it will run this next piece of code and branch off depending on the result of that code, similar to what a switch would be in most other languages. And in this case, this is going to either succeed or error because this is a built-in NFT mint function. It's built into Clarity. Clarity is going to mint the NFT, assign ownership to the new owner, which is the principal. And we're gonna either have a success or an error. If it errors out, we return the error like so. Otherwise, we go through this process of setting current balance to be the balance of the new owner. And then begin is going to start the process of running a few commands. One of them is going to try to transfer uh, do a stacks transfer, which is, this is a built-in clarity command. 
of this much stacks to wallet one, whatever that's set to, uh, stacks transfer of this much stacks to wallet two, and then we're going to set a variable of the last ID to be the next ID in last ID to be the next ID, right? Which is the, the newly minted ID. So token count should be a map with, with a principal address and their current balance. And this function is saying to set in that token count map, the new owner to their new balance. And just to verify that, I want to see what token count looks like further up. Uh, yeah, token count, principal, and a balance. So there's principal and their balance of tokens. Exactly what we'd imagine that to be. And finally, it returns true because everything passed. And that's how you read smart contracts on the Stacks Explorer.